Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jessica. I am a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. And this is my channel where we talk about all things dogs and cats, behavior, training, enrichment, nutrition, all the things because I have a holistic approach to healthcare and dog training. So in this video, we are going to be talking about some tips to exercise your dogs indoors because this happens, right? One, it could be freezing cold outside. It could be insanely hot outside. We could just be busy and not have time to go out on hikes and you know runs, doing all the things outside. There's a lot of reasons why we may need to spend some time exercising our dogs indoors. So if that is what you are here for, well, you came to the right place. Let's get into some tips for exercising your dog indoors. Okay, so the first tip I have for you, I almost didn't include it in this list today because it's not for everybody. But for those people that do try this out, a lot of dogs can really get some great exercise from this, and that is a dog treadmill. Now, you cannot use a human treadmill for this, no. Like, human treadmills are not okay for dogs to use. There are special dog treadmills, and if you've never seen one, here's what they look like. <laughs> and they can actually be really great, especially for dogs that maybe need a little bit more exercise than you can give them. Maybe they need to lose a little bit of weight or they're super, super high energy and you just need to give them something extra in the house. Dog treadmills can be really great. But again, <laughs> they're not for everybody. So if they're not for you, that's okay. We have a ton of other ideas. Stick around. All right, the second tip is possibly one of the easiest. All it requires is two humans. So if you have another person that lives in the house or a friend that can come over or a relative that can come over, this is gonna be great. You often played this when you were a little kid. I know you did, we all did. It's called monkey in the middle. So all you're gonna do is find a long hallway or a large open area in your house. You're gonna entice your dog to play with one of their favorite toys and you're gonna toss it between the two of you. Of course, your dog does need to win every once in a while so that they continue to want to engage with you, but this is one of the best things you can do spending absolutely no money, right? To get some extra extra exercise for your dog because your dog is gonna be running back and forth, but also, and here's the best part, your dog is engaging with you. So it's also a bonding experience, right? For both of you, so you can have fun with it and play monkey in the middle with your dog. All right, the next tip is for those of us who have stairs in our homes. I don't, I have a one story, but if you have stairs in your homes, you can incorporate the stairs into games you already play with your dogs. Of course, you do wanna make sure and check with your vet that your dog is okay with that sort of exercise because there are some dogs that may have previously had injuries or are more prone to um, ACL or CCL tear. So you wanna make sure that your dog is okay for this kind of activity. Do check with your vet, but including stairs in playtime, um, even training that you're already doing, can amp it up a notch, just enough to give your dog that extra little bit of exercise that they need. Okay, another tip is to create an obstacle course for your dog. Now, this doesn't have to be expansive or even fancy. In fact, if you live in a tiny one-bedroom apartment, you can still create a small space in your home for this. You don't need a ton of space, and you don't need to go buy anything. You can use things you already have around your home, like clothing, um, bed sheets, cardboard boxes that you haven't broken down yet because we all know we get a ton of deliveries these days. There are plenty of cardboard boxes to go around. Broomsticks to drape linens over. You can create simple obstacle courses that are going to engage your dog. You can hide some of their food and treats in this obstacle course and add a level of excitement to it, something that can engage their um, nose as well as engaging their body and physical activity. So that's something really wonderful that again, you don't need a whole lot of space certainly don't need any money to do it. Just use things you have around your home and entice your dog to play in that area. Another great way to give them some extra exercise. 
Another great thing you can do with your dog is play tug of war. Now, a lot of people overlook this because it just seems so simple, but I have to tell you, my husband and I play tug of war with our dog almost every day because it's one of her favorite things to do. She likes to go get toys from her toy box and then we, we have a, she has designated an area for us to play in our home and she likes to hold on to the toy while, while we tug on the other end. Now, she knows, it, it depends on her mood because she knows I play a little bit easier with her and my husband, he's not rough, but he plays a little bit rougher than I do. So depending on what kind of mood she's in, she will actually go to me to play and then turn around and go to my husband to play because she's like, okay, you got me riled up. Now I really want to engage. So she'll go to my husband. So tug of war is one of the most underutilized games that is super easy to play with your dog, but also very engaging and gives them more exercise. Like all you really have to do is hold onto it and your dog is using their whole body and tugging and it's, it's a great exercise for them. All right, the next one on the list is indoor play dates. Now, of course, if your dog doesn't like other dogs, then this is not gonna be for you. But if your dog does love other dogs, then they probably have a few friends around the neighborhood, right? Why don't you get together with some of those people to get play dates going for your dogs? This doesn't have to be outdoors at a park if it's too cold, if it's too hot. Of course, we don't wanna be outside for extended periods of time, right? but we can have indoor play dates for our dogs, just like we would create play dates for our children. Create play dates for your dog. This is, again, something free and fun, and it'll give you an excuse to catch up with that friend who's bringing their dog over too, right? Win-win. Okay, I kind of mentioned the next one previously with the obstacle course, but here we go. We're gonna create its own separate tip, right? hide treats play hide and seek but with treats right so hide treats around your house for your dog to find now this is actually something i've talked about with cats because hunting feeders are really great for cats and one thing i've noticed is that when i put my hunting feeders out for my cats my dog loves 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 it so this is something that is really fun for our dogs to do as well is to find their food to hunt for their food so of course if you're just starting out you want to make it kind of easy and increase gradually <laughs> the difficulty level but over time you can really hide some stuff for your dog to find and they're going to be able to find it because they have incredible noses right and food is something that they are very motivated to find. So hiding treats around your house or even using their daily food rations, especially if we have an overweight dog and we don't wanna overfeed them and add a ton of treats into their diet, we can actually use their daily food intake for the same things. Hide it, let them find it. Again, they're gonna use their noses, which uses their brains, which by the way, wears the body out faster than physical exercise does. So the more we can engage our dogs mentally, the better. Now, if you do wanna use treats for any of these tips that we go over today, I highly recommend single ingredient dog treats. Now, if this is something you're not familiar with or you're like, yeah, that does sound like a really good idea, Jessica, but I don't know what those are or where to find them, I'll have some linked in the description below. Some of my favorites, some of Kim's favorites, because that's even more important than what my favorite is, right? Is what my dog really likes. And if my dog likes it, by the way, I use these same treats when I train other dogs and boy, are they motivated, especially the ones who have never had a single ingredient treat before. They're like, oh my goodness, I am their favorite person in the world. I promise you, your dog is gonna love them too. All right, the next tip on today's list is indoor fetch. So if your dog does not already play fetch, Fetch is something that we do need to teach our dogs. Now, if you have not taught your dog to play fetch, or if you think your dog doesn't like playing fetch, it may be that they just weren't taught the right way. So that is something that we do want to teach our dogs to do. And once they learn it, let me tell you, fetch is gonna be one of the best things you've ever taught your dog, whether you do it outside or inside. Now, of course, if we're doing it inside, we wanna be a little bit careful to not throw a toy or a ball and hit or break something, right? We do need to be a little bit more careful, but it can still be really fun for your dog to do this indoors. And if you don't already know how to teach your dog to play fetch, um, if I haven't done a video, I will do a video on that and I will link it in the description below. The next tip on our list today are snuffle mats. Oh my goodness, my dog loves her snuffle mat. And if you have not tried one, I made one. 
In fact, I've made a bunch. I've made snuffle mats for like all the dogs in my family, um, but Kim loves hers. And the one that I made, I will link in the description below. I'll also include some that you can buy in the description below, but I have to tell you the one I made is far superior from any of the ones I've ever purchased. So if you have the time and you have the resources, they are not expensive to make, but if you have the time, go ahead and make your own because your dog is gonna love it for years and years and years to come. All right, the next tip is bath swimming. Now, this generally is gonna be better for smaller dogs unless you have gigantic bathtubs and also for dogs that actually like swimming. Not all dogs do. Some dogs love it, some dogs are eh, okay with it, some dogs don't like it at all, and that's okay. Whatever your dog likes on this list, that's what you need to go with and just, you know, get rid of the things that don't work for you and your dog. That's a-okay too. So bath time swimming can be a really fun activity for your dogs to do. Really easy on the joints. So if you do have a dog that likes swimming and they do have joint issues, um, one, hopefully we are, uh, we are, we're treating this with a healthy, fresh food diet and lots of supplements that are going to be great for the joints not going to get into that in this video but if you do have a dog that has joint issues we of course reach out to me i'm happy to help um, with you more on that but swimming is going to be a lot better than on the joints than something that's a high impact like walking or hiking or even that treadmill we talked about earlier swimming is very low impact on the joints so it can be a really great option for those dogs who do have joint issues another great thing you can do is a socialization outing so yeah, we may not want to be outdoors if it's too hot or too cold or the weather is just too crappy, right? But there are places that we can take our dogs that are indoors where we can train with them and socialize with them that are safe for them and that are not going to be out in the elements. Like um, Home Depot is a store that allows pets as well as Lowe's, PetSmart, Petco. There are lots of stores and there are probably stores that are local to you that also allow pets. So you can do a really quick search on Google, you know, shops near me that allow pets and find some really great places to take your dog, do some socialization, do some training while you're there and just make it fun for the both of you. Okay, so we talked earlier about doing monkey in the middle, kind of on that same wavelength is chase. So you and your dog play chase around your house. Of course, be careful. You don't want to run into anything or knock anything over. You know, remember all the things our mom taught us when we were little, right? Except the no running in the house. Well, it's your house now, so maybe maybe a, a soft run, <laughs> right? So let your dog chase you around the house. Engage them with play, get something fun that they really love and have them chase you around the house. I, a lot of times, our, we have a nice backyard now and I will go outside with Kim when the weather is nice and I don't even need anything to engage her with, meaning a toy or a treat or anything like that. I can just come up to her and start running around and she'll start chasing me. So you may not even need anything, even indoors, for your dog to start chasing you, especially if you can start with play, you may not need to continue the play. Maybe the chase for your dog is going to be the play and that's a-okay. So there is another tip for you for exercising your dog indoors. Okay, this list would not be a list, it would not be complete without licky mats. I absolutely love, love, love licky mats. They are great to occupy your dog. Licking is a stress reliever, anxiety reducer for your dog. So if they do need more exercise, if they are bored, licky mats are a great solution for you. If you've never heard of one, <laughs> I will link some in the description below. And of course, I'm gonna have a video um, overlay to show you Kim using one of her licky mats. She has quite a few of them. And yeah, it's, it's a great boredom buster for your dog. It helps them use their brain while they're eating. They have to, they have to do a little bit more work to get their food and that is a-okay because dogs actually really like working for their food. So that's another really great way to exercise your dog indoors when going outdoors just really isn't an option. Okay, foraging boxes are kind of along the same lines except you make it yourself. So I'm sure you have some cardboard boxes lying around that you haven't broken down yet. We get, we get cardboard boxes all the time, right, in the mail. So create foraging boxes for your dog, whether you're using toilet paper rolls or um, even hand towels, anything you have lying around the house, maybe some uh, crumbled up newspaper, hide food and treats in there and let your dog forage through the box. 
you can use your snuffle mat inside of a box. Oh, how about that? That would be a good tip too because you're adding an element to the snuffle mat that makes it just a little bit more difficult, meaning getting into that box. So lots of things you can do, but let your dog explore and find their food and treats. That is the reward for them. They're using their brain, they're using their nose, which uses their brain. It's a win-win. And of course, last but not least, train with your dog. Whether it's something they already know how to do because we need to repeat these actions over and over throughout our dog's lifetime to make sure that they understand that we continue to want them to behave in these ways. Or if you wanna teach them something new, that is totally okay too. Training is always something good to do with your dog. It works their brain which again <laughs> is great exercise for any dog that is pent up indoors when they may not want to be. So I hope that, and, and it's a great bonding opportunity for you and your dog as well. So I hope this list was helpful. Comment down below and let me know if you already do any of these or if any of these you're going to be adding to your dog's routine. I would love to hear from you and let me know a little bit about you and your dog as well while you're down there in the comment section. I hope you liked this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you're not already subscribed, oh my goodness, why not? Look down there at that subscribe button, click it, turn it gray make sure you are following getting all of the bell notifications all of the things also i hope you join the family over on patreon we have a wonderful very tight-knit family it's a safe space over there on patreon and you get lots of new content exclusive content behind the scenes first look at content that goes out also if you are not following the podcast why not the pet parenting reset wherever you get your podcast make sure you give us a follow there too. Thanks so much for joining me today. Give your pets, your dogs, your cats, all of your wonderful critters around your home some extra love from me today. And until next time, bye guys.